In this lesson, we are going to implement the functionality for creating records into our database. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to go to the resources, views, layouts, app.blade.php and on the navbar, we are going to add a link so that the user can click to visit a page for creating a to-do. So I'm going to duplicate this list item and this is going to go to the create to-dos page. So this is going to be slash new to-dos which means our next step is to actually register this route. But let's verify that that link exists. So if I refresh, you can see we have a link that says create to do's. So we're going to go to our routes file, which is the web.php that's in the routes folder. And we're going to register that route. So route get, and this is going to be new to do's. Remember, it has to be exactly the path that you provided right here. And we're going to say this should go to the to do's controller at create method. So we'll go to our to do's controller, which is in the app HTTP controllers folder. Then here we're going to create a function called create. In this function, we simply want to return a view that the user is going to use to create a to do. So this is going to be to do's dot create so we would go to our to do's folder and we would add a new view called create dot blade dot php since we want this to look exactly like our other templates we are going to extend the main layout so extends the layouts dot app template then we are going to define a section called content and section in this section called content, we are going to have a form. This form is going to have a form group. And let's talk about the fields we need. We need a field for the name. We need a field for the description. And we need a field for the completed. So the name field is going to be an input of type text. So I'm just going to give it a class of form control. And we want to make sure to give it a name of name. So if you come back to application and click on create to do's, you can see that it renders that view right there. And we have that input, but we probably want to make this more beautiful. So let me just look at how we did this. First, we have an H1 and then we have a div of row just try content center. So let's use the same format. So I'm going to have an H1, the text center that says create to do's. And then we're going to have a div of row the justify content center and here we're gonna have a call md of 8 and I'll paste the form right there so great here's our form so we probably want to give this a margin y of 5 and would like to put a form in a card so this is going to be a card dot card default and then we're going to have a dot card header and this is going to be create new to do and we're going to have a card body and in the card body we're going to paste our form great so let's give a placeholder to this field and this is going to be name and for the second one we're going to have a form group and this is going to be a text area dot form control and we're going to make sure the name is description so if we refresh this page you can have the name and the description let's give the description a placeholder placeholder is going to be description and we probably want to make this smaller so rows and columns of five Great, so we have a name and we have a description field for our to-do. Finally, all we need is a button that is going to be the submit button for this form. So here we're going to have a form group. And here I'll have a button, that button, that button success. And this is going to be saying create to-do. If I refresh, great, that's our button probably want to have this button at the center so we can have text center 
on the form group. Great. So here's our form for creating a to do. When the user types in the name and the user types in the description and the user clicks on create to do, then automatically a new to do should be created in the database for the to do's table. And when we come to view all to do's, we should see the newly created to do right here. So how do we make this happen? First of all, we need to make sure that this form is of method post so that it makes a post request to the server. Second, we need to specify the action, which is the URL that is going to handle this request. In this case, we are going to add create to do or maybe store to do's. Okay, it could be anything. But in our routes file, we have to make sure we define a route with this path. So in our routes file, we're going to say routes. And in this case, since we are making a post request to send data to our server, we're going to use the post route static method. Then we're going to direct this to the to do's controller at store method. Remember, this route is used to display the form for creating a to do. And this route is a post route that is used to actually save the to do to the database. So to display the form, we use the create method to actually save the to do to the database. We use the store method. So let's go to the to do's controller and create the store method public function store. Now, if we come back to our create.blade.php, make sure that you have a name on these input fields because that's the only way this data is going to go to the server. And one more thing we want to do probably is to give this a type of submit so that it submits the form. So let's go ahead to our to-do's controller and I'm going to use the diadom function and I'll call a function called request. Okay. Now we're going to talk about this in a second. But for now, I'm just going to refresh this page, type in the name of a to do, drive the car, and this is going to be drive the car to the mechanic. And I'm going to click on create to do. And what do we see? We see a 419 error that says your session has expired. Please refresh and try again. Now, this is a really popular error that you're going to see in your applications. And the reason behind this is because Lavo automatically has cross side request forgery protection. This is a token that you have to send every time you're making a post request or a patch request or a delete request to your Lavo server. This is protection to make sure that the post put or delete request is not coming from an external source to provide that token. We need to come to all forms that we create in Lavo and make sure that we provide a directive code at CSRF. And let me show you what that's going to do. If we go back to our form right now and refresh and we view the page source, you can see that right now in our form, we have this input right here, which is hidden and the value is a token. And this token is a secret token that Lavo is going to check on the server side to make sure that it actually is coming from our website. Okay. Basic CSRF protection provided by Lavo by default. So now if we put in drive the car and put in drive the car to the mechanic and click on create to do what we have now is a request object. And this is the die DOM replaced in the controller. So when we clicked on that, it made a post request to the store to do's endpoint. And in our web.php, we said the store to do's endpoint should be handled by the to do's controller store method. And in our to do's controller store method, we die dumped a function called request. And this request object is going to give us an instance of the current request that the user made to the server. If we want to see all the data that the user sent from the client, which is from the form, we can do request or, and if I refresh this right now, you can see that request all gives us the name, the description and the hidden token for Lavo's verification. So we can get this name, we can get this description and we can use that to save a new to do to the database. So 
what we're going to do here is we're going to create a new variable called data and this is going to be request all and this data now contains all of the data coming from the client side then we are going to create a to do so we're going to say to do is going to be equal to new to do and this is a new to do model next we are going to say the to do name should be equal to data name property then the to do description is going to be equal to data description property notice that this is what is coming from the form and this is our model itself so we created a new instance of the model and we assigned a name property which is going to correspond to the name field in our database table and we assigned a description property which is going to represent the description field in our database table next to save this we're going to call the save method and this is going to make a database query to save that to do to the database then we are going to redirect the user back to the page to view a list of to do's so we're going to return redirect and we're going to pass in the to do's path right here which means after saving a new to do we redirect the user to this page so let's go ahead and try this click on continue and we have an error that says general error field completed doesn't have a default value and that is because we have saved a value for the name we have saved a value for the description but we've not saved a value for the completed field so in this case we're going to say to do completed is going to be equal to false by default so let's try submitting again and now everything goes well and you can see our to do right here has been added to the list and remember this list fetches all the to do's from the database if we check our database directly refresh you can see our to do right here is appended at the end this is awesome so if you view our to do you can see the id is six and we can see the details of the to do that we created let's create another one if we go ahead and create a to do maybe mode the lawn and we could just paste in some dummy content dummy content for mowing the lawn and if i click on create to do you can see it creates the to do and it redirects us back to this page mode alone and we can click on view and we're going to see the description all right so in this lesson we learned how we can create data into our database using our model so you create a new instance and then you create or assign properties for that instance using the data you got from the form so to do name is going to be equal to the data we got from the form and it's going to get the name key the description is going to be the description and the completed is going to be initialized to false and then we use the save method to persist these values to the database then we redirect the user back to the to do page all right so i hope that was fun for you as much as it was for me and I'll catch you up in the very next lesson where we're going to learn some more cool stuff.